when I weigh the historical evidence pertinent to the resurrection of Jesus and the various competing hypotheses to explain this evidence, then I'm convinced, objectively and honestly, that the best explanation of this evidence is the hypothesis that the original eyewitnesses gave, that God raised Jesus from the dead. And for that reason, I think that this was a historical event. Even today, pilgrims return to the site of Jesus' tomb to celebrate his resurrection, just as they have been doing for almost 2,000 years. Once a year, pilgrims from all over the world pack into the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. A fire is then lit from within his tomb and is spread from candle to candle through the church, then throughout Jerusalem, and then to the ends of the earth. to the New Testament, Jesus' resurrection clearly fulfilled David's prophecy. In this world, there are over six billion people alive today. But if you want to send a letter to just one person out of those six billion, how much information do you have to put on a letter to do that? Not much. Surprisingly small amount. A few lines of information on a letter can pinpoint one person in the world. In the same way, the details given to us by David, Isaiah, Micah, and Daniel can identify one person out of all the people that have ever lived. Who else in the scope of history was born in Bethlehem from the house of David, pierced hands and feet, killed before the temple was destroyed, and whose tomb was found empty. This is, this is God speaking to us. He really did tell us before he sent his son Jesus. He really did tell us what his plan was before it happened. After applying the Deuteronomy 18 test of a prophet to both Bible and Book of Mormon prophets, it becomes clear that the biblical prophets accurately predicted the future, while the Mormon prophets failed. The biblical prophets are surrounded by an abundance of historical evidence, while there's no evidence at all for any of the Book of Mormon prophets. In fact, None of them appear in any written source until the Book of Mormon was published in 1830. These Book of Mormon prophets prophesied of Joseph Smith, the Latter-day Seer, and that the Book of Mormon shall come forth. It shall come to pass that the Lord God shall bring forth unto you the words of a book. The book shall be delivered unto a man, and he shall deliver the words of the book. Since there are no ancient texts that contain these prophecies, we're simply left with the fact that in 1830, Joseph Smith published the Book of Mormon that prophesied that Joseph Smith would publish the Book of Mormon. This is why non-Mormon scholars conclude that the Book of Mormon prophets were created through the imagination of Joseph Smith himself. The only thing that you have is something that has been printed in the 19th century. It has been written by someone in the 19th century and given to print. Okay, uh, I can do the same if you want. You can do the same. You can take, you can write, I, Joel, I say that I uh, now I am uh, the true prophet and uh, the Bible has been corrupted and all the Bible uh, of uh, the Christians is nonsense. And this is the true Bible. And yet, what, what can we say? Who is the witness of that? Who is the, who is the, who is the guarantor, guarantor 
of what you are saying. Only you, yourself. But Joseph Smith took it a step further by inserting these prophecies about himself and the Book of Mormon into the Bible. Joseph Smith claimed the Bible was not translated correctly, so he did his own translation of the Bible. In it he inserted prophecies about himself and the coming of the Book of Mormon. This is the new translation of the Bible by Joseph Smith of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This is the new translation of the Bible by Joseph Smith of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Yes. Um, have you ever heard of this? It's the new translation of the Bible by Joseph Smith of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Hmm. Joseph Smith's translation is also known as the inspired version. On each page, the column on the left contains the text of Joseph Smith's inspired version, while the column on the right contains the text of the Bible. Throughout Smith's translation, there are multiple pages of additional text that are not found in the Bible. You can see where Joseph Smith's translation goes on and on. Look at these sections in here. I mean, of, of text that, look at that. I mean, we're, we're talking some major some stuff. Major What's being said here is this is the plain and precious portions that have been lost from the Bible, and this is it being restored by Joseph Smith. And he's talking about corruption of the Bible. Here's Isaiah chapter 29. So we're not talking about a letter here of difference. We're not talking about a few words. We're talking some some major differences in how much text is in Joseph Smith's Isaiah and our modern Bibles. Gosh. So are you curious what is in this text? Absolutely. Joseph Smith inserted these prophecies about the coming of the Book of Mormon and himself into his translation of Isaiah. It shall come to pass that the Lord God shall bring forth unto you the words of a book. Smith's Isaiah says the same thing. It shall come to pass that the Lord God shall bring forth unto you the words of a book. The book shall be delivered unto a man, and he shall deliver the words of the book. The book shall be delivered unto a man, and he shall deliver the words of the book. But the book shall be delivered unto a man. That sounds familiar. And who, what man do you think that's talking about, prophesying about? Uh, Joseph Smith. But the book shall be delivered unto a man, um, and he shall deliver the words of the book. He, he, what he's doing is he's adding prophecies about himself yeah. and the Book of Mormon into Isaiah. Three witnesses shall behold it by the power of God, and they shall testify to the truth of the book. Three witnesses shall behold it by the power of God, and they shall testify to the truth of the book. Three witnesses shall behold it by the power of God. Okay, so is that the same verse as we find over here? Yes, it is. Logically, what what is your what do you think when we compare the Isaiah scroll to Joseph Smith's Isaiah? Do you think that this information about the coming of the Book of Mormon through Joseph Smith and the three witnesses is in it? I'm afraid to say I doubt it. All we need to do to test Joseph Smith's translation of Isaiah is compare it to the great Isaiah scroll. That was some of the early attempts of Mormon scholars to see if the great Isaiah scroll supported a text.